Hello, my name is Eric Seropian, and I will be on the online prosperity show. And today we're going to be talking about the ins and outs of search engine optimization and how you can harness the power of Google. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the SEO expert himself, Eric. Eric, how are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, for our viewers, Eric is the president and founder of My South Bay, which is a digital marketing agency, and they are an agency that focuses on search engine optimization, social media marketing, local SEO, and overall digital marketing now if you find eric on a very good day he has a overall understanding of how to create an online community and deliver clients and sales while creating and expanding your brand now eric has over 10 years experience working with small to medium businesses and helping them generate exposure clients leads and sales now eric i could go on and on about your accolades and everything else that comes along with it tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started with um search engine optimization sure well back in the day i uh owned a jewelry design firm in los angeles i'm based out of los angeles and when the great recession hit you couldn't give away a piece of jewelry or a diamond everybody was busy uh you know making sure they can keep their homes they can keep their jobs uh so while uh getting through that i started to change the business and go more towards business to consumer and i wanted to kind of figure out what this search engine optimization thing was or digital marketing in general this is we're talking about you know 2007 2008 this is you know, maybe 15 years ago and so as we got through the, the economy, because we were mostly manufacturing and selling to jewelry stores. And so as we got through the economy, we, re we realized that a lot of the stores were going under or they were just closing up. Um, and we started to sell directly to the public. And at some point I started to do some consulting for friends and family, like just running their campaigns for free, seeing what I can do and seeing that I'm able to get Google's attention uh, and get them traffic coming to their sites. And at some point I, uh, jumped into it hundred percent. Fantastic. And I'm really excited that it wasn't the first thing that you set out to do. It just came, um, you know, as a byproduct of you doing work that matters for, for the people that you cared about. Now you're coming in from a jewelry background and we know jewelry is all about shiny objects and we know seo is a long-term game how do you actually make both work and how did you find an attraction to something that is so um far-fetched from something that is an instant gratification yeah it's difficult to you know as i speak with clients whenever i onboard them i tell them you know seo is the long game you know, eventually it's going to overtake everything else that you're doing as far as traffic coming to the site or conversions um, and everything else. But in the beginning, it's baby steps. It's not like Google just hands you the keys to the car and says, here, I'm, I'm giving you this keyword. You know, take the keyword jewelry. You're going to be number one forever. Uh, that's just not how it works. And so um, if we can keep that in mind, and that's something that I learned right away, uh, as, as I tried to optimize my company's site back in the day for jewelry, that it's not the, and frankly, you know, uh, you don't want to go after the big keywords anyway. It's difficult to have, let's say for instance, if you, if I, I tried to optimize for the keyword jewelry for starters, but there's so many things that encompass jewelry. Is it a watch? Is it a, a jewelry repair? Do you want to sell your jewelry? Do you want to have it appraised? Is it an engagement ring, a wedding band? Like what? what is it and so real quickly you find out that you need to go after the long tail keywords like men's platinum diamond comfort fit wedding band there might be 100 searches a month coming to for that keyword but if you have the if you can rank for that in the top 10 or top three and you actually have that product and it's pictured nicely and it has the description and you have everything in place you're going to convert much higher than if you just went after the keyword jewelry 
Absolutely. And that was, and that was my, you know, that was my first understanding of, you know, hey, we need to take this a little bit slower. And so whenever I, in the beginning, when I would do friends and family, and then after that, when I started to take on clients, uh, paying clients, um, I was clear, like here, I, I have this track record of, I did this for myself. And then I did this for these other, you know, 10 people. And now I'm doing it for you. Keep in mind that this is what's, what's to be expected. Absolutely. Now, obviously, you've been working with um, all these other small to medium businesses for the last, say, 10 years. What is one thing or two that a small, um, you know, a lot of small businesses get wrong, especially when they're getting started with SEO? That's a good question. I'm, I'm going to say one, you know, one of several is that they, a lot of times, you know, we've all gone, gone through our journey on various subjects. And when it comes to digital marketing, I feel like uh, people have gone through their journey as far as hiring people online and it hasn't worked, hiring people overseas, it hasn't worked, hiring their next door neighbor's kid, uh, you know, trying everything and everything to, to do it and it doesn't work. And so they come, sometimes, you know, I, I speak with people and they're like, I don't believe in this, but prove me wrong kind of an attitude. And so, you know, I and other digital marketers, we're not here to vouch for Google and Facebook and Twitter. You know, like we don't get a, we don't own a percentage of that company. It's not, it's not like my, you know, brother is Zuckerberg or something, you know, like it's, it's just, uh, it's just, we, we want to take the, the, all this search traffic that's coming through Google and harness it and get a, get a small bit of that and send it to our clients. Now that traffic that's coming through is almost like a laser beam because it's going to be geo-targeted if it's a local business. It's going to be for the exact, more or less the exact product or service for that business. So it's going to be really clean traffic the way that Google does its uh, optimization. But yeah, you know, uh, tr try to come into it with an open mind and an open heart, you know, because it didn't work before doesn't mean that it's not going to work now. There's an opportunity that if it works, it's, it's going to, you know, expand and escalate your business. If Fantastic. you're in business without harnessing Google and some of these platforms and these search engines, uh, and you're able to stay in business, when you're able to take the energy of Google and those assets and use it to your favor, then your business is going to, you know, expand and skyrocket. Fantastic. Now, Eric, I really love the analogies that you're uh, bringing to the table because it's non-technical and obviously whoever's listening and watching right now can easily grasp the things that you are bringing to the table. Now, Eric, a quick um, question. So obviously if somebody says, okay, maybe SEO is the thing for me to do, what's the one thing that they need to start working on, um, you know, in order to get their uh, skin in the game or maybe foot in the door, so to speak, to actually then say, you know what, now I'm on a journey to start, um, you know, my SEO uh, optimization. Sure. So the, the first thing that we always want to do is we want to make sure that the, the, the client's website is quote unquote optimizable, meaning that you don't have a bunch of broken links on the site, that the time on site when you're, when the load time on the site is, within a certain range that Google would be happy to rank you. Like if you, it, it doesn't happen as much anymore, but before you would go to a search engine, you would search for something and then you'd click over from the search engine to the website, interested in the website, and it would take you forever to load. And so that's not a good user experience. And so you come back to the search engine, you try another, and if that's slow to load in the next one and the next one, you probably are gonna go to another search engine. So one of the first things that you need to make sure is that the user journey on, the, uh, on your site is a good one. Something basic, like you, know, you, you click a couple of pages into the website, and then when you want to go back, sometimes it says pages expired, or you click on the, you want to purchase, or you want to call them, and you click contact, and it's a broken link. You know, things like that, where you want to make sure that the website is, is working properly and that it's mobile friendly. So a lot of times companies, they look at the desktop, but they forget, or maybe they don't even know that Google actually ranks you based on how well your mobile performs. And so you, 
you kind of overlook that. So sometimes websites are working perfectly fine desktop, but mobile, there's a whole bunch of issues on or vice versa. So you just, first things first, before you take the car out for a spin around the park, you want to make sure that it's safe, it's working, it's got gas in it, you know, like that, that you have your seatbelt on before you go to the racetrack and the Indy 500 or the, you know, whatever race you, you follow and make sure that, um, you know, it's, it's functioning before you start to optimize the site. Fantastic. All right. So we've buckled our seatbelts. We've put in the fuel that needs to uh, happen in terms of the mobile optimization, website optimization, crafted all the user experience. Does that guarantee um, you know, ranking or success in, in my business? So should I just set that and forget? Or is there more things that you then uh, do in order for you to stay competitive? Oh, that's just getting started. That's, that's just, you know, you could do all the best things, but if you don't have a site that's, you know, optimizable, it's not going to work. So now we have the website that's optimizable. Then what we do is when we're onboarding a client is we do a competitor analysis. So we want to take a look at, especially with local businesses, there's always that guy down the street or that company down the street that's just doing really well. And the client feels like, if I could just be like them, I'm going to be happy. They're, they're doing well. I'd like to have a version of that. So we want to see what they're doing, what keywords they're ranking for, you know, uh, you know, what they're doing on the back end, what they're doing on their social media, et cetera. And so once we put together uh, what we think the, the competitors are doing, we also do analysis on the, the website as it is right now. So it could be that there are some keywords that they're ranked for, that, but they're ranked like number 20. If they got to the top five, they would love that. So they're kind of there, but not quite, because a lot of us don't go to the second page and the third page when we're searching. But it's much easier to take a keyword that's ranked number 25 and get that to number five than it is to just get a keyword that's not ranked at all and to get them to five, ranking five. So uh, you, know, you kind of do it in layers. So we want to do a competitor analysis. We want to do analysis on the, on the site as it is. And then we would like to know from the client, what are the keywords? What are your services that you offer that you would love to rank for? Because a lot of times people give key, keywords or give services thinking that's what everyone's searching for, but there's no money in it for them. You know, even if they convert or it's, it's not a client that they really want because it's a high effort and, and low uh, income kind of a uh, service. So tell me what you want, like what kind of client, if you're, if you're a real estate agent, do you want commercial real estate people searching you or do you want residential or do you want seaside or do you want, you know, like give me data so that we're not going through all of this for, and then you get the phone calls and you get the traffic to the site and you're not happy with it. So we're gonna expand all this energy to do that. So then we have the data to start to optimize. So we have a website that's functioning and you always have to check, you always have to kick the tires and check the website, make sure that links aren't broken, that you're not getting certain spam notifications and all that stuff. And now we have a keyword analysis, we have a competitor analysis, and then we have keywords and services from the client that they would love to rank for. And now we can take the car out for a spin. So a uh, couple of things that help rank for uh, search engine optimization. Uh, one is certain metrics that Google looks at. One is reputation management. Uh, one is social media. People are surprised always when, I, uh, when we show case studies on social media impacting SEO because Google will look at Let's say your Facebook account. Let's say you, I'm just going to use round numbers. Let's say you have a hundred followers on your social media, and last month you had 90, and the month before you had 80, and this month you have 100. Next month you have 110. There seems to be kind of a trend, and people are liking, following, sharing, commenting on your social media. That's going to show it as a a good metric. It's just going to be another search, you know, a, a check in the box, and you're posting regularly. It's not like you're posting you know, 365 times January 1st and nothing the rest of the year. It's kind of done where if you can post 50 times a year, post once a week. 
and there's some some uh, system to it. And so uh, the other thing is reputation management. We have to make sure that just like in business, if you're doing it in a, in a marketplace or if you're doing it online, uh, in, in real life or digitally, you want to make sure that your reputation uh, precedes you, that you have a good reputation. Uh, it, it, you can't make everybody happy all the time. And I always tell my clients this, when there's a negative review that comes in on Yelp, respond to it. Don't insult, don't defend yourself. You know, we're sorry you had a bad experience at our restaurant or at our spa or whatever. How can we make it right? You know, you, as, as for me, when I search on Yelp, uh, I look at the negative reviews first. And when I see that the brand is making an effort, you know, I think, okay, I, I'm going to disregard that, you know, because they're, because sometimes the brand says, we're sorry, how can we make it right? And then the user goes in and just continues their rant. You know, they're just upset. So I just figure, okay, you know, I'll, I'll leave that review aside. Let me see some of the other negative review uh, is how I look at it. So you wanna make sure that you're engaging your clients when they uh, give you a review. Thank them for the good. Uh, the, the other ones, be sure to see what you can do to turn them around. Because they've been in your location or they've received your product, they're interested in what you have to offer. It's just, you know, you, you kinda, there's always that middle ground to figure out how you can do it. And some people, you just can't turn them around. They're just going to be upset. But at least as a potential client, when I go in and look at those reviews, I see that the brand is making that effort. Fantastic. So from what I'm gathering from you, and I really appreciate that uh, well thought out uh, response. From what I'm gathering out, Google actually rewards you if you're a perfect business. So if you've got good user experience and if your website is working in such a way that whoever comes to the site gets that information uh, speedy fast, and then pretty much you are actually looking after and taking care of your customers. That's um, you know, the components that would actually um, help you start ranking uh, on Google. Is that good? Um, is that a good assessment from what it is that you've just mentioned there? That Perfect. Really, if you really want to win at SEO, you have to look at all components of your business. Are you doing the right things in the business world? That's, that's exactly right. So you're not going to be able to, the, the thing that we run into sometimes that people have tried on their own sometimes is that they're good at certain things, but they're not good at some of these other things. And so they figure, let me just do these things and, I, and I'll get ranked. But that's generally not how it works in business. It's not how it works in life. You know, you have to be well-rounded. And if you're good at IT, you can do the IT. But if you need someone to do content creation or link building or reputation management or whatever, you're going to need to hire someone a consultant or a freelancer or, you know, whomever you have in your circle of influence and you can't overlook it. You can't just be like, I'm going to be without content. It's just not going to, you're, you're going to be wasting your time doing that. Fantastic. So, all right. So we've fixed up the website. It's running real fast. We've uh, made sure that, um, you know, our reputation is speedy quick. We've snitched on our, um, competitors and found out what it is that they're doing best and now we're going to do it uh, better than they are what will be the next thing that somebody would then uh, tackle and then pretty much uh, you know just give us an outline of what that sure is. yeah obviously we're giving this in a condensed version there's a lot to do to, in order to get that free traffic coming in from google because for a small to mid-sized business it's a game changer as you know so the next thing that we're going to do is when we identify a keyword that we want to rank for, what we want to do is we want to build out content for that keyword. Okay, so let's say we are, um, I don't know, we're, we're um, a restaurant and we do uh, Italian food. And so we specialize in Italian food. So what we want to do is we want to make it clear to Google uh, what our specialties are. So we're an Italian uh, restaurant. What are the dishes that we specialize in? What are our hours? Where's our location? All the, all the things that Google would want, because it, if let's say I'm in Los Angeles 
and I searched for an Italian restaurant and I had a restaurant that came up in New York City, it's completely irrelevant to me. So Google needs to deliver that really fine search results to me. So what we're going to do is if there's a particular keyword that we want to rank for, we need to build out content for that. Now, it could be a dish that the client is enjoying or that the chef is cooking. It could be a video. It could be a, a, a picture with a recipe. Uh, whatever it is, we need to have uh, the content. A lot of times what I do with video content is I uh, create the page and then I embed the video onto the page and I transcribe the video. Because some people like to read, other people like to listen, other people like to watch. So Google is eating that up because, uh, you know, like a, let's say a five minutes video where someone is speaking could be, you know, a thousand word blog article. So depending on how quickly people speak. And so you have that, that, that content that's being created. A lot of times I, I've had clients where I, you know, like a dentist that always comes up. I have this dentist that uh, I'm always trying to get content from him. He is not a writer. He's not going to sit there and write, but I could interview him on, on uh, kind of like what we're doing here. And that's content. I can ask him, you know, give me the top three things to avoid, you know, cavities. And he can sit there and, you know, talk for hours. But if I ask him to write it, you know, we're, we're, kind, we're kind of stuck. So either way, you have to create content. You have to make sure that you title the content around your keyword research. And you have to make sure that the page is optimized for that keyword. I have a lot of people that try to go uh, like a shortcut. They'll do one piece of content and try to optimize it for 10 or 20 keywords. That no longer works. I prefer to do one keyword at a time and make sure that if you're a local business to you know, uh, have the city in there, maybe the zip code, uh, uh, maybe the surrounding suburbs, mention those in your, in your podcast. So that Google, as it spiders that page, will know exactly without a doubt where you're located and what, what your specialties are. Fantastic. So from what I'm gathering from you, Eric, and I really appreciate, um, you know, how you're taking these concepts uh, into really, really layman's terms, because a lot of people really get confused when it comes to uh, all this uh, search engine optimization, and they just put it in the too hard basket, and nobody gets to touch that basket. What I'm gathering from what you've said so far is SEO should simply stand for simply educating others you're educating people about your services you're educating people about what you're offering you're educating people about um you know how you can best serve them and you just so happen to be creating the content which they are consuming in order for them to be uh, educated with regards to that would i be wrong in my assessment of what you've just uh, told us right now no it's perfect and i love the acronym simply educating others i love that Fantastic. Great stuff. So we've been talking a lot about keywords and we've been talking a lot about content and all of that stuff. So if I'm just getting started, um, you know, with my business, where would I be looking at to make sure that I'm putting out the right content or I'm using the right keywords that people might actually be searching for what it is that I'm putting out there? Sure. The free one is uh, Google Keyword Planner. You can go in there and you can see it. A lot of times it falls a little short uh, uh, from these other apps. There's Moz, Ahrefs, SEMrush, SpyFu. There's a bunch of them out there, but it costs some money. You know, whether it's, I, I think uh, $99 or so is, is the average cost per month. So, you know, some of these tools, they add up over time. Uh, you know, so you have to kind of be careful with it. And you could have it one month on, one month off if you want, or you could do it you know, different ways. But uh, it gives you reporting on, okay, this website is ranked for, let's say 300 keywords in the top 100. This is ranked number one. It has this many uh, search volume and, and so on. So you get all the data that comes in and you could see if it's dropping, if it's going up and you can track it that way. Fantastic. So Obviously, somebody's just sitting there and say, uh, I was getting the hang of this. I was going to go and look 
um, you know, to see if my website is working. I was going to put all the content that needs to happen. I was going to, um, you know, search what my competitors are doing in a, a competitor analysis. And you've just mentioned there's all these um, other expenses that I have to pay to uh, search for keywords. What would be the best way for somebody to um, maybe get started working with you so that they know that whatever they're doing is going to be the right way or they could just simply get uh, somebody of your expertise to do it all for them so that they are not going to be touching the wrong button sure so you know they can hire uh, whether it's my firm or other firms or freelancers um, they should you know engage someone that is not going to learn on them that they've done this many times before. And we have to keep in mind that, uh, you know, tech moves quickly and there's a lot of change. Some industries, you know, it hasn't changed much in the last 50 years and other industries, it changes quarterly, yearly, and tech no doubt is one of those that it's changing a lot and it's a moving target. So you can do, let's say you're doing Facebook ads and it was working well, uh, six months ago, and maybe six months from now, it's working horribly. So you have to constantly be on top of things, make sure that you're tracking your conversions, set up your conversion tracking correctly, um, and make sure that you hire someone that's done this and that is in these circles that it's not like Google sends out a email to you saying, hey, you forgot to tag these five pages on your website. If you tag them, I'm going to give you ranking. Sometimes you just don't know what's happening. I'll give you an example. When I first start, when I first start out, I, I uh, there, there was a, a content creator that was writing some really good blogs, and so I took the blogs, paid him his money to do the writing, uploaded it to the website, and then the more I uploaded new content, the more the website sank. The ranking just took a nosedive, and the more I did it, the more it was happening. It was like, I'm not going to say instant, but within about three, four weeks of uploading this content and I'm uploading at the time, I think I was uploading maybe three or four pieces of content a week to the site. And so it turns out since I have people in the circles and I'm telling them to take a look at the site, it's driving me crazy. I don't know why the rankings going down and, and things like that. It turns out that this person that was doing the content creation was going to other sites copy pasting the content and sending it to me as if it's original content. Now, when I take that and I put that on my website and show it as if I wrote it or that it's unique content that I had prepared, I'm getting knocked for plagiarism. So, because Google wants original content, it doesn't matter if your content is not well written or it's whatever, they want to make sure that it's not the same content, the same picture, the same product on a million sites. So by the time I figured that out, it took us forever to get that website back out of the sandbox. So the, the thing that I suggest is if I didn't have that network of people, I would have never figured that out. And so try to be with someone that is immersed in this and this is their specialty and this is what they do. And when you hit a rock, you hit a uh, something, they have people to go to. It's not that it's gonna be solved 100%, but your chances of getting things done and, and going in the right direction is much better. When I deal with people now, when we're bringing people in uh, to do certain things, I always ask, you know, have you done this? How, I don't want you to learn this on me. You know, I want you, we, we had a, we had a, we have a, client that uh, needed some pictures taken in their office and you have to take a picture for Google My Business and certain uh, angles and everything Google friendly. And he's like, I could do it. I could do it because I don't, I don't have someone that's 2000 miles away. I found someone online and I asked him, have you done this before? Because I don't want to ha have you learn on me. Go learn on somebody else and come to me and I'll give you work. And so because what happens is it creates this chain reaction that this is wrong. And then that creates, this is going to be wrong and that's going to be wrong. And you're, you know, if you do too many things that are wrong, Google's not going to optimize you. Fantastic. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, if you're listening to this, you would appreciate the knowledge and depth of advice that we're getting from Eric. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, if you've got a toothache, you never 
uh, look in front of a mirror and try and remove that tooth by yourself. <laughs> or if you've got eyesight problems, you're not going to just go break a piece of glass and think you can fashion out a, a pair of spectacles for yourself. You're going to need an expert, somebody who is in the game and is um, well versed with all the changes, like what Eric is mentioning and, um, you know, advising us on here. Now, Eric, what's the best way that people can actually come and get the Google Lens uh, from you just so they can see uh, what Google needs and um, maybe you can help them out uh, start optimizing uh, their sure. websites. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what they can do is they can go, there's two things. They can go to my website, thisismysouthbay.com. And I'm in the South Bay part of Los Angeles. I've, I'm in love with it. I've grown up there, so I've named my agency after it. They can do one of two things. They can put in on the homepage there, they can put in their... Um, email their email address uh, their website address and i believe their name and we will send them a free ranking report on their website so that's completely free we'll we'll send it over to them and they can take a look and see which keywords that they're, they're ranked for what the search volume is for each keyword and so on the second thing is that on the home page on this is my south bay they can go and uh, book a 30 minute free consultation. It says book now. And they can go in there and uh, 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 book a, a time that's convenient for them. And uh, I'll answer any questions that they have on SEO, any strategies, any, uh, you know, anything to do with search engine optimization. Absolutely. There you have it. So if you're struggling with your local marketing, you just want to enter your name, your email, and your website on uh, this is my South Bay website. And obviously, Eric will be there uh, to help you, uh, you know, make sense of the internet, um, you know, all Google stuff around you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, obviously, from what I've heard from Eric, um, from his own mouth, he has explicitly told us that Google has lied to us, right? They have made it out that if you type in any keywords or any information, somebody is sitting at Google with uh, a library of all the websites in order for them to give you that information. Whereas we have to make sure that our websites are optimized. We have to make sure that our websites represent who we are and are actually educating our audiences as to how we can actually get connected um, to them, especially if they're searching for the products and services that we are offering there. So obviously, in order for Google to save face, they're going to have to make sure that your website is representing them in the right way. And the people that are demanding that information get the right um, website that corresponds to the keywords that they have put across there. Now, Eric, we could go on and on and on, um, you know, and um, talk, but I'm afraid the algorithm might be changing as we speak. <laughs> what, sort of, <laughs> what sort of advice would you give to somebody who just watched this show right now, has a bit of uh, information uh, and has a bit of confidence about jumping into SEO? What, what sort of advice would you give uh, to them, um, you know, in order for them to either keep going or to engage with some of your services? Sure. So I'm going to back up to what you said about uh, Google uh, misrepresenting or lying. I, I don't think that's the case. I think what you have to keep in mind, the secret sauce to Google is that they have focused on the user experience. They feel like if the user had a good experience on Google, they'll keep coming back to Google. Um, what, what other search engines, in my opinion, they got wrong is, they went after the advertiser, they, they became advertiser centric. They wanted to take care of the advertisers first and then afterwards figure out the, the, the rest of it. So everything that Google does when it changes its algorithm, when it's trying to differentiate whether ranking this site or this site is trying to decide, it's playing matchmaker and it's trying to decide what, you know, which, which website is good for this user. And, and, and so on. And so we wanna, we wanna, if we can keep that in mind and uh, look at this as almost like a, a relationship that's harmonious as opposed to a battle, you know, because you go into certain 
seminars or certain things and it's like war seminars like war analogies and i don't i don't think that this this is war it's they need us we need them you know they need our content to index to to be able to uh, uh you know run their search engine and we need their traffic and so if you think of it like that and you work with it it's you're going to get much further than uh you know uh other ways Fantastic. Well, I can't thank you enough, Eric, for taking the time to really walk us through um, the ins and outs of search engine optimization um, simply in, you know, in layman's terms. OK, so if you've been watching this, um, you know, and you're just uh, on the brink of getting started with search engine optimization, I really, really suggest that you uh, visit um, www.thisismysouthway.com. Uh, leave your information there and Eric will be there to help you out. And um, like we have mentioned, Eric has had 10 years of experience and that's why, um, you know, it was so easy for us to reach out to Eric so he could just give us the ins and outs of what's been happening in the social, uh, in the SEO space. Now, Eric, I can't thank you enough for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Fantastic.